Hello and welcome to this episode of the Be Free podcast. And today I am absolutely delighted to have Julie Davidson from Jules Gems with me. And there is nothing in my eyes that Jules does not know about <laughs> crystals and how to use crystals and um, all the good things. So I'm really delighted to have her here today, kind of sharing her wisdom with us. Um, because I know so many of you have asked me questions about crystals, how to use them, where to start all the things and um Jules is just the lady to do that so um well, hello <laughs> do you want to do a little intro to you Jules um kind of who you are what you do I uh, yes thank you so thank you Susie for inviting me to do this it's a it's a real pleasure to do this with you and I'm also looking forward to the master class next month as well with you amazing yeah it's going to be so be fun. fun yeah spit it in soul members get ready yes yeah yeah that'll be fun because I'm actually going over to yours Susie to do this together I thought that might be quite good fun uh, just take all the crystals and everything with me oh my gosh my together. house will be like super high vibe <laughs> buzzing absolutely so my name is Julie Davidson or everybody calls me Jules for short um I am a daughter I am um a mother a mother of two lovely girls and um, a businesswoman. The businesswoman part is what I do here at Jules Healing Gems. And, you know, I'm a friend to everybody um, outside of, of this, uh, the, the workplace. Yeah. Um, I have been doing Jules Healing Gems uh, when I created that way back in, uh, when was it, 2011? I created yes. um Jules Healing Gems. I started at home um, for six months after I got made redundant. Okay. So, yeah, so I thought I better put all this tools and experience and um, certi certifications that I, I, I went through uh, to put to good use. Yeah. Shall we say. Yes. Yeah. Amazing. I didn't know you'd started at home because I love your little treasure, Aladdin's cave of gems. Um, and Ellen here in Aberdeenshire and you're kind of in the back of the shop just now which I know is just like full of incredible <laughs> um, crystals yes. and gems and yeah yes. so you mentioned there obviously so you haven't like always worked with crystals what did you do before then? I was predominantly um, a secretary in the oil industry going way back to the 80s and the 90s when um, the oil sector, the oil industry was in its heyday and it was a really good time to work in the oil industry. It, it was just so much fun mm -hmm. and you do progress, you know, within your chosen career and everything. And I look back at that time really quite fondly um because it was the start of my sort of career in the secretarial yeah. world and in the oil industry um and you know you just kind of flew flew through the 80s shall we say yeah. I love it <laughs> really? uh, I can just imagine you flying through the 80s like if anyone has met Jules before she's just got this wicked energy and amazing <laughs> laugh that you'll like, hear just now um so yeah I bet you were super super fun to work with um, oh, yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so what kind of drew you to working with crystals then after that? So what was um let me just think. Um you've done Reiki years. and you've done you do all sorts of different things as well. Yeah, yeah, yes. I mean from I mean the, my career's probably set me up for being um I think self-employed and it was always a dream of mine was to have my own business so from being a secretary I went into advertising for um, the daily local papers and went back into um, the oil field industry again um, did that for a fair few years then had children and then we moved out uh, to the countryside had a croft um, and we played kind of the good life for about like six, seven years, mm -hmm. but it was within that time out at the Croft, I then went into the care sector for about five and a half years, and I worked in a private nursing home mm -hmm. where they cared um, predominantly for dementia and Alzheimer um, patients. Yeah. And 
I maybe look back and I I kind of reflect and I think the the all the careers that I had, so being a secretary, be advertising, being a care assistant, it was all very much people orientated. Yeah. And I love people, you know, I'm very much a, a people person. Um and equally by then, I think it was in 2008, I did my first two-year course with Zaria. Mm-hmm. Um, the, you know, the fabulous uh, uh, therapist down in Dumfrieshire. Yeah. Um, we I did a two-year course on crystal therapy, natural healing medicines and psychic development. Mm-hmm. And that really sort of piqued my interest in holistic healing although I I always felt from about my 20s I was always just interested in something I thought there was more out there yeah you know that you can always learn but didn't know enough about it and I didn't have enough life's experience at that time I think to do anything about it um but you know fast forward about 20 years um did Zaria's course um the following year I was I was made redundant um, and I thought, what on earth do I do with myself? Mm-hmm. Um, and I had just finished Zaria's course, in fact, when I was made redundant. And, and for a few year, a few months, you could say I was kind of lost. I didn't know which direction to go yeah. into. And I thought, I don't want to go back into the oil field industry because it had run its course in my eyes. Mm-hmm. Um, and I thought, well, you know what, I might as well put these courses to good use. Yeah. Um, and I started working from home for about six months, set up a bedroom in the house into like a little shop. Um, and when we were on Zaria's course, I used to get my crystals from a lovely shop in St Andrews called the Crystal Shop run by Claire and Joan. And one time when I went in there, um, John had said to me, you know, if ever you want to start up a little business Hmm. come and contact me and his words kept on coming back to me when I was just in that space where I I love that divine timing isn't it like it won't let up it just keeps coming back little nuggets totally Susie it is it's absolutely divine timing so I contacted John um sort of long story short we I got set up with John he supplied me with so, so many lovely crystals and I did six months working from home and getting the word out but I wanted more yeah. so one day when John was up with his van I told him this and he says oh come on let's go into Ellen and see if there's any little shop units available oh my goodness <laughs> and that's what we did so we hopped into his van and we scooted into Ellen stopped off at delicious next door for a coffee and I asked them the owners at the time do you know of any um shop units available for for lease and um Tracy Gibb uh, who was one of the the founder members of delicious said next door she no said, way. I love that available. you're not available next door we'll put you in touch with the landlords um and be, oh, sorry uh, basically that's what happened sorry i'm just correcting my phone here that's okay. yeah. <laughs> um got in touch with the landlords and basically a few months later we were up and open you know we got the shop ready laid out oh my goodness and and that's how it started um you know 10 years ago and there'll yes. be so many people grateful for that happening for sure because I know <laughs> how many people's lives you have impacted along the way. Uh, thank you Susie and it was one of those things that um, when I remember back people said are you mad because it was at the time of um, oh gosh the, you know the, the economy wasn't doing very well yeah. at all whatsoever um ah you you know you you won't get um it passed by the bank manager literally within about 12 hours I got the bank loan passed yes you know it it was easy doors opened and it was made easy and that's truly how it happened yeah I love that and I think that that's like I think for a lot of people like when they've got big dreams it can feel like so far off but when it's in alignment and right things like that do happen it just seems to like click 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 it, it, it was it was easy and you know I never thought it would fail I just thought this is going to go okay yeah 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 cool. <laughs> and now sharing your gifts with the world so um as I said I've got a lot of people who are kind of new to crystals and things like that what would you say is people's like 
first experience of crystals, what are they typically looking for? Is there a typical thing? Like? Oh, there, it comes under a range maybe of um, sort of requests when people come into the shop. Um, you know, you've got your life's decisions job, you know, your career, finances, relationship, and your mental health. Yeah. Um, and gradually, and sadly, increasingly over the last number of years, we've all noticed that is predominantly increasing as people's mental health. Mm. Um, and it's not just a case of when they come into the shop and you know maybe pacifying them and give them a two pound tumbled crystal no it's not that um and i think that's what a lot of people out there think about crystal healing or poo-pooling holistic modalities yeah. you know there does seem to be a bit of that that goes about on facebook and social media but you'll get other people predominantly nice people who yeah actually relies you know the benefits and the effects of any healing modality whatever you want to yeah. use as long as it's cleaving you know um, um blockages you're talking to somebody you're getting somebody's input back reflecting yeah. back to them you know you're asking questions as long as you have your interaction with that with your customer or your client um it's more than that, you know, than, than just coming in and somebody selling you a tumble stone. Yeah. Where, I mean, so where to start from that would be, you know, you ask the customer what area of your life do you feel is needing a little bit of a hand or an insight or mm -hmm. just a reflection back to you. And you take it from there, from whatever answers that they give me, I then figure out what crystal or crystals would be best for them to use and I explain how to use them and why I'm thinking that way mm -hmm. amazing so, so yeah. you know it, you're getting more than um you know you're getting an insight of of my insights of what I feel with them mm -hmm. yeah. of what's going on with them I love that thank you and so when people are using crystals, what kind of benefits can they experience? Um, when you first, when you use crystals, there's many benefits. Um, you know, like a, when, you know, people who have maybe never used crystals before come into the shop, they can feel maybe a rush of energy. Yeah. And feel a calmness, or they can actually get very emotional in the shop. Mm -hmm. And it's just all not, it's, it's their way, it's their response to holding the crystals or to talking with me in the shop. Now, I think because you come into the shop, you're surrounded by yeah, so many yeah. crystals. The energies can perhaps be a little overwhelming until you get used to them. Yeah, but, I have been in another, another crystal shop before when I wasn't in such a great place either. Yeah. And I remember walking in and like, my heart, I felt like it was going to pound out of my chest, just the sheer yes. energy of the space. And my husband had taken me in to buy me a present. And he was like, just pick what you want. And I was so overwhelmed by the yes. energy. I was like, I just need to get out of here. It's like too much. Um, so I think <laughs> yes. getting the support, like you mentioned, is really beneficial that you offer, you know, more than just I think it's great to work intuitively with crystals and go in and pick, but equally, I think it's so great to have someone like yourself who has the knowledge and experience that you can kind of lovingly guide people towards what might actually support them. Yes, I mean, I, I hope I achieve that because that is what is needed when you're working with crystals. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's what people need to understand, um, you know, because when you come into a, a crystal shop, you're looking for for some help in whatever direction of your life is needing guidance at the time mm -hmm. um and often you go towards a crystal that you're immediately attracted to or drawn to you don't know the reasons why but invariably once i start talking to people and find out what's going on it's one of these things it was the right thing for them yeah. to go towards and so you instinctively know what's right for you yeah I love this the body yeah the body doesn't lie does it it's that whole vibrational you know and um I think this is what I love that people are trying so many different holistic things so whether it be Reiki or essential oils or 
crystals that there's all these vibrational tools there to support you and I think one then feeds into the other and people once you learn about one you want to know about the next one and the next you're one. in the rabbit hole going off in all different directions you know because yeah. you're so excited and enthused it's best to keep it down to a limited number because you get so distracted and diluted going off so it's maybe just better to learn one or two things at a time you know yeah definitely and I think then you can see yeah. the benefits of that particular yes. modality and I, and I think consistency is the key word mm -hmm. practice daily you know practice daily whether it's your crystals or meditation or whatever your chosen um, application is consistency is the yeah. key thing I think yeah, yeah. my house is like I was walk as I was walking through for this uh, pod I was like oh my gosh I literally have crystals everywhere you know I think sometimes people might yeah. think and even you know or maybe they don't think they've got crystals in their home and actually it might be on a piece of jewelry or you know a bracelet Just lying in a corner <laughs> yeah yeah you forget they're there because you're so used to them <laughs> being there yeah so um, I asked my uh, members if they had any questions around crystals and, um, you know, what they would like to ask. And there was a few questions that came up that I think would really support other people as well. So one sure. of the first questions was basically just like, where to start? Like, where do you start? Oh, well, I would maybe go in two directions here. You might just want to start in one or two um tumble stones mm -hmm. you know perhaps you'll take yourself off their crystal shop and just find out what it's all about maybe you've heard from your friends or you've seen it constantly on Facebook um and your friends have maybe mentioned oh there's this shop in Ellen mm -hmm. <laughs> um go along and talk you know talk to the the gal um you may just maybe come along with one sort of condition perhaps you'd yeah. or, or something that you'd like to uh, deal with in your life so you might just start with that or further talking to the person you might realize that maybe their chakras are out of balance mm -hmm. you know if one thing is pulling on you know maybe one part of the body um, you know if you're out of alignment you know maybe I don't know you, you'd be moving job or moving house so that affects your root chakra which is your stability which is the root chakra, um, chakra number one. Yeah. So that is all your foundations and your structure. You know, that is out of balance. Well, if that is out of balance, as you know, Susie, mm -hmm. it, yeah. there's a ripple effect that happens um, going up the body or therefore your psyche. Mm -hmm. You know, so one thing is out of balance. It has a huge impact on other areas of your life. Yeah. So you've got to take yourself back down to being like centered, anchored and rooted and kind of working your way up from that and re-establishing your foundations, you know, and your structure, which I, you know, which I call your structure. Um, so I think your chakra set might be a really good place to start yeah. with as well. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, you would go through the seven main chakras in the body, explain what they're all about and why, you know, they're significant in the, in the chakra stones that you pick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I agree. I think that's such a great place to start because it's pretty much got you covered, doesn't it? To start with, when you have yep. have those seven crystals or eight, depending, you know, where you yes, go. two for the heart chakra, the green yeah. crystals um, for the heart chakra. Yeah, I think, and I, obviously, a lot of clients I work with experience anxiety and stress and depression, and I yes. think supporting that root chakra, as you mentioned, is really important for them because a lot of them can feel. Um, kind of lacking in that grounded uh, uh, absolutely yes absolutely yes I think and this is maybe something we could cover in the master class but very briefly if you're thinking too much in your head space mm -hmm. you're not anchored and grounded mm -hmm. so that's always a telltale sign you know for somebody to look out for yeah, yeah. and just to bring yourself back down again by whatever method you know that you like to do or mm -hmm. people you like to work with yeah, yeah. I, love, yeah. I love crystals as well because I think it's something tangible for people to yes. actually see oh, hold. Yeah, oh that's a beauty if anybody's <laughs> watching this we've got to watch, watch on YouTube see some of Jill's crystals here um, that's a Lemurian point I'm holding yes oh, yeah yeah <laughs> So yeah, I've got crystals kind of around my home, use them in my classes and my workspace and um, I bet it's yes, full right. of crystals oh god yes <laughs> that's an understatement but i don't overwhelm it i've got 
a few chosen pieces, mm -hmm. you know, maybe big ones, you know, in my room somewhere, maybe two or three in a room, and, and that is literally about it. Yeah. Um, but I do have, maybe on my bedroom window still, I've got, you know, a, a lovely large tumble stone set of, of chakra stones. Lovely. I've always worked with the smaller ones, but I'm kind of getting down into my large tumble stones. Mm -hmm. They're quite a nice size to work with. Yeah. Um, but you'll have that on the windowsill. Um, and then I acquired a few a few crystals from um, the late great Kathleen Murray um, from her daughters. I, I got saw a number of lovely pieces, actually. Uh -huh. Yes. Beautiful. Yeah. But so that, that kind of brings me on to one of the questions that people ask, does size matter? When it comes to crystals, <laughs> when it comes to crystals. <laughs> um, depending, I'm going to say depending, you've maybe got a couple of choices here. Um, if you're wanting a big statement piece for your home, so you'd be, you know, a big, big, you know, maybe amethyst geode. Well, you would want that for maybe the entrance coming into the hallway of your home. Yeah. You're going to need it. A, you know a big size like that because it's got a big area of energy to swell out into and to cover you okay, know with yeah. its like essence and vitality if you're working on a one-to-one -one, you know with yourself and your little crystal um no no i you know you can work with a little crystal about that size and get uh, you know like an incitement into whatever is you know drawn up for you you know into your awarenesses mm -hmm. um it can just like shift and move something and this blockage clears and you know this awareness comes into the forefront of your mind yeah. whatever it is you know you can reflect upon it you can process it and then you can let it go yeah uh, well, you know, maybe you want to, i want to just come out to your shop now i'll have a little birthday birthday trip out to your shop I think <laughs> like have a little rummage <laughs> <laughs> well I'll start you out with something <laughs> <laughs> um, and then one of the other questions they asked were like the do's and don'ts of looking after crystals so is there things that they should be doing and not doing and things like that yeah there is there there, there is a few actually generally you can cleanse your crystals by putting them into a vegetable um, sieve, you know, your plastic uh -huh. sieves. Yeah. Easy, simple. And then just run cold, cool, uh, running tap water over them. Yeah. If you're lucky enough, maybe to put them, you know, if you've got a little stream, you know, in your back garden, you know, running through, you yeah. could put them into, like I say, a peg basket you know, mm -hmm. where the holes aren't too big anchor them down into the little stream and you have the water running through them Beautiful. that is actually quite a profound effect to see it's amazing uh -huh. i don't know the life force that seems to return into them when that happens um my next favorite would be if you've got a softer crystal okay. so in crystal language you've got something that's called the mo scale m-o-h the mo scale which runs between zero and 10. So you've got talcum powder, which is a crystal that would obviously be zero, yeah. up to eight, nine, ten, which is quartz crystals. Um, and the hardness of a quartz crystal, you would need a diamond cutter to cut through them. Mm -hmm. But if you were at the lower end of the scale between zero and five, so the crystals that I would put in there would be like the likes of selenite, yeah. um, fluorite and celestite. Well, I wouldn't put them in water because they're quite porous and soft. Yeah. They're about two or three on the most scale. So I would sage them. Um, I don't have a sage packet, but um, here we go. Sorry. Pretend this is your crystal that is maybe soft and that is my sage stick or wand. Yeah. Well, you're, what, you're wrapping the smoke from the sage wand around your crystal and you're setting your intention. Yeah. Your intention is a very important thing. And it's a very strong and predominant thing. You're setting your intention to cleanse and clear the crystal of yeah. any unwanted energies and, and to return to source mm -hmm. for when it was found. Yeah. Natural, clear, cleansed in its you know, natural earthly beauty. Mm -hmm. Incredible. Yeah, so that's what you could do. So tap water, um, 
sage or incense sticks. What I wouldn't do, me personally, is maybe soak them in um, salt water. Yeah, you know, adding I've salt. I haven't people. actually done that, but I have heard of that. Yeah, yeah, I know. Um, I've never done that. It's never felt right to me. Mm -hmm. Some people can maybe put them in the freezer. I think you could only do that with quartz because it's okay. strong enough to uh -huh. withhold that effect. Otherwise, it would just crack. Mm -hmm. um, but me, sim simply, you know, as I've just yeah. said, water, um, sage, and then you can put them out into moonlight. Moonlight is always to cleanse and clear, and yeah. the sun is always to um, to put in um, re-energizing vitality and essence back into your crystals. Amazing. So you can put it out at night time in a full or a new moon, uh -huh. and then take them in in the afternoon once the sun has beaten down, you know, on, on the crystal. Yeah. And the, the, the crystal has, you know, had the effect of the energy of the sun on it. Yeah. Take it in, give it a little wash down, get the earth off it, ready to use again. Oh, wow. Yeah, because I think that's yeah. some things that people forget about is the actual cleansing of the energy of the crystal, you know, the crystals absorbing your energy and the that's energy of the surroundings as well, you know. Absolutely. They can take a lot. They can, truly can withstand a lot of um, the energy crystals can. But, you know, go on the premise. The more you use them, the more regularly you have to cleanse them. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. And then, so obviously you love crystals, but what other things do you use to support your kind of mental, emotional, physical health? What, what kind of things do you enjoy? I was reading that question actually, and I, you know, and I wrote it down, and I thought, can I just do it automatically? Um, what do I do? I love meditation, and from that, I love maybe writing. Yeah. Um, and and I, I, not exactly journaling, but I just like how would I say, um, anything that annoys me or fears or yeah. worries or anxiousness, I write that down, and I don't. Um, procrastinate over it I don't look at it again mm -hmm. I let it go I just let yeah. it go yeah um so meditation writing you know um I do yoga I walk my dogs uh -huh. frequently um though I feel I need to go back to the gym because I feel I'm quite unfit right now and I want to get my fitness and health back you know I think it we're just, all feeling that a bit kind yeah. of post this whole <laughs> two-year covid situation yeah. where it's just like oh yeah, I try to get back into some kind of routines and I think it's that, yeah. So, and winter. So, absolutely. And winter. Oh. I've, and I noticed yesterday I thought it was about what time was it? It was about quarter to six. It was still light. Yes, I know. Very I know I looked outside this morning actually. It was like lighter in the morning as well. I like looked outside, I was like, it's really bright. They're like, oh wow, it is actually. It's so good. It's so good. Yeah, I'm, I'm is on its way. It as everybody else is. You know? Yeah. So for those of you listening elsewhere in the world, both Jules and I are in the northeast of Scotland. So it's yes. quite dark and cold here still. Um, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. making our way towards towards the sunshine. And I noticed Absolutely. actually before you came on, like in the you've got is it a packet of crystals around your neck? Oh yes, yes. Oh, I say a little it. bag. If you watch this on like <laughs> IGTV or Facebook or YouTube, it's quite a large bag. It is actually, it was a larger one that they had in stock, um, so I just had to buy these. Um, I go through quite a few of them because they get so dirty because I wear them all the time, you know, uh -huh. it's them. But I, I put my favourite crystals um, in there um, and they've been there for quite a while. It's just my mm. favourite ones. I love It's like a medicine bag, me. isn't it? I guess, it's like Native it Americans would have used. It is. It's, it's from a Native American supplier, in fact, uh -huh. that I get these from. And yes, I have them on me the whole time. But mm -hmm. actually, I also put my, going back to one of your earlier questions, um, I also keep my crystals, you know, like, like you said, your small crystals. Yeah. I actually keep them in my bra with me next to my skin the whole time. Yeah, it's so funny because when I say that to people and a couple of, I've said that to a couple of people recently about having crystals in their bra and they're like, are you mad? What? And I'm like, <laughs> no, it's a thing. It, it is. is. <laughs> it is a thing it is a thing and you forget that they're there and... yeah, until you go to the gym like you mentioned <laughs> and then clunk <laughs> and the flea off <laughs> yeah oh, the medicine bags a lovely idea just for having them having I them have it. 
the, the whole time, the whole time. I've seen me go out at night with the, with the, you know, the black dress on, and I put on this natural, yeah. and I thought, oh, it maybe doesn't go. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. And, and then, so, obviously, so, like, yoga, meditation, and then what kind of things inspire you? Oh, I, I think people, mm. you know, you're many, many people on YouTube I watch. Um, I, I love um, how their game plan, you know, is up here. They're on point the whole time. Yeah. Um, you know, the likes of your Matthew Hussey's, Tony Robinson, um, there's Susan Winters, there's so many people, Dr. Ramani, loads of great people with huge experience mm -hmm. and advice yeah. and their intellect that they you know they're on point working at their game the whole time huge yeah. respect to them that's my inspiration really and you know equally i i, I look back as well and um my two girls and my mother mm -hmm. are my inspiration as well yeah yeah they're all in different same you know, aspects of their life and going through different things. Um, and I'm good, I'm, I'm in middle age, you know, I've got one above, two below, you could see, um, and, and just seeing how they're coping and their, their, um, their strength, their, um, how would I say, their indomitable spirit, yeah. I think. That, that's my inspiration. And the girls I have around me, the people, you know, who help me out in the shop, um, you know, there's the two seeders, there's Steve, my marketing guy, you know, the, they have just their unique abilities. Yeah. In, in every way. Yeah. Incredible. Always something to be learned from each other. Absolutely. And I think it is, you know, sometimes we can think that, you know, yeah, exactly. Inspiration needs to come from the likes of your Tony Robbins or whatever, when actually it's like around us as well, as you mentioned, your daughters, the people you come into contact with. Kind of every yes. everyday heroes, I guess that are. You're right, Susie. Absolutely, yes. Just yeah, every there's angels that walk amongst us. Don't they say that? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. So my podcast and my life is fueled by being free. My book is be free. My podcast be free. Yes. My coaches be free because I that is just well, it's a core value of mine, and just I think that sensation is just such a powerful one, but. What makes you feel free? Oh, lots, of oh, course, lots of things. Let me think. Let me think. Um, what makes me feel free? Down at the beach, walking my dogs down at the beach, or in like a, you know, a, a, a beautiful forest. Um, Glen Tanner is always one that just inspires me. There's something magical about Glen Tanner. Mm -hmm. I always feel. Um, so down by the sea or in the woods, a, a real nice foresty area. Um, I think it's quite magical, actually, going to honor. Um, what makes me feel free? I did for the first time last year. Um, my friend persuaded me quite easily. She said, go and hire a camper van and follow me in my motor home. Oh, cool. See how you, uh -huh, and see how you like it. So I've never driven a camper van. So I hired one and I went away for about five days, followed wow. my plane across to the West Coast and then to Sky. And I loved it. Amazing. I absolutely adored it. Oh, the scenery, just the excitement of driving on your own and you know, handling on the, the roads over yeah. the you know, a camper van, just like a new skill set. Mm -hmm. I always like to, to learn new things. So I think I find that quite freeing. Yeah. And equally, I think another thing, and I think I've, I've learned that by reflecting, you know, on, on yourself is um, not to box yourself. Uh -huh. Think outside the box. A friend told me that years ago. Think outside the box. Mm -hmm. And I think I've always remembered that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Road trips are so fun. I think. Yeah, that kind of impromptu. <laughs> Road trips. Just doing yes. things, as you say, kind of spontaneously that you might not ordinarily do can feel do. so free. Exactly. Very, very Susie. I like that spontaneity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Enjoyed that one. Amazing. Okay, so you are going to be sharing a masterclass for our beautiful Spirit and Soul members um, in on. March. Um, can you tell me a bit more? What what kind of things might you include in that? What I'm what I thought of doing was um, 
a number of things. Um, I thought of taking a chakra set along. Um, in fact, I've got a few chakra sets. I'll show you them. Yes, <laughs> you know, exciting. From, yeah. <laughs> um, I'll take a few chakra sets along and show you what a chakra set is all about mm -hmm. um, and explaining how that works. I also thought of maybe explaining, because I'm often asked this in the shop, um, how do you grid like a house on your garden? Yeah. If maybe you know are, are living on top of ley lines which yeah. are a lot of um unwanted energy shall we say mm -hmm. um that's a great big topic i would like to maybe do that as well mm -hmm. and um i'm thinking maybe how to use the pendulum yeah as well. yeah yeah oh my gosh i'm so excited <laughs> yeah so i mean three simple sort of tools um mm -hmm. you know that you can use and bring into everyday life yeah, I yeah. think, yeah, grids. I know that some people had asked about that, actually, yeah, but they had grids and what were they supposed to do with them or um, little bits and pieces like that. Yeah, I think that that was yes. amazing. Um, so anyone who is listening who isn't a member, our membership doors are opening in March. So you want to get yourself onto the waiting list so I can let you know as soon as they open and you can come and join Jules and I for her live session equally. Um, if you join us after, then you can still access Jules' session because it will be there um, and you can reflect back and connect with connect with her there um, yeah. but other than obviously the spirit and soul membership how can people find you because I know you do a lot on Facebook live for example maybe for people that aren't in Aberdeen and things as well like how can yes. people find you and connect with you well um so as you say Susie um my shop is called Jules Healing Gems you can contact me there um the um, the email address is Jules, J U L E S. So it's Jules at Jules Healing Gems dot co dot UK. Um, I'm on Messenger under Julie Davidson. And on my Wednesday night live um, on Facebook, which is under my business page, we go live from 7 30 um, p.m. every yeah. Wednesday night. And I do a live show, which lasts for about three hours. Oh my now, gosh, I've never actually realized it lasted that long. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> you get to hear me talk <laughs> and I'll give bits and pieces of advice and information oh. but it's, it, it's a capacity eh, or a modality that um, was set up actually during in 2020 during lockdown and it's how we survived how the business survived yeah went live on a Wednesday night I think it was and a Saturday night yeah. and it saw us through out lockdown yeah. So we do post out to the UK, um, over to Ireland, over to Europe and, and worldwide. Yeah. And orders over £25 are posted as free of charge. Oh, wow. But that's the way that you can contact me. And on the shop landline, um, which is Ellen 01358 Amazing. So I will share all of Jules' links. I will share the links to her website to her Facebook page or all the social um, aspects so that you can connect in with her. Um, yeah, I think that'll be, I know that I've got a lot of members who, um, yeah, let's England, Ireland, Wales, overseas, um, and things like that Fantastic. as well, who will be really interested in, in um, yeah, learning about it. And obviously any of our uh, listeners as well could want to connect with Jules, please go track her down. There's so much wisdom there to, tap into and impart and yeah is there anything else you want to add before we wrap up today oh gosh Susie um I think you've covered it <laughs> yeah yeah I think uh, that was a good uh, chat that we've had today it was Absolutely. lovely thank you no thank you and um yeah I can't wait to share our live session together later in March yeah um, and until then, go check out Jill's page, connect with her, get some crystals ordered, and um, we'll look forward to seeing you guys, hearing you guys soon. Thank you for having me, Susie. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Goodbye.